Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. So, today in the chapel, I've got 2 Corinthians 9.15. Thanks be to God for his, for his indescribable gift. Of course, the gift of God, um, the gift of Jesus. It's the week of Christmas, so that's why that verse was used. I was going to do Advent with you guys. And if you've noticed, I've had some problems uploading. Last week's did not upload. Um, it only about half uploaded, so I finished it this morning and it should post. Um, so this week, again, you'll get two. <laughs> Boy, the end of the year is just kind of, uh, we'll see what happens next week. Who knows? So, all right. I don't have my paper that goes down what all we do. So I'm just going to start with the crochet. I'm, I'm kind of winging it. Um, I'm in here in the den. This is my crochet spot, and I thought that I just kind of, it's a little bit more relaxed. I thought I'd take time to show you where I sit and crochet. Um, I've got my big comfy chair. My yarn basket is over there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, wine rack, which has our advent. Um, it lights up and the little tree turns. Uh, and then over here we've got the Christmas tree. And if you'll notice, the bottom is not decorated because the dogs have decided to chew on things. Um, I don't know. I think I've mentioned it in the past, but uh, Little Worm has chewed up some gifts. Just unwrapped them. He hasn't chewed up the gift on the inside. He's unwrapped them. Um, ate the wrapping paper. Ate the tissue paper. Uh, he started with Daddy's gift, and then he went to Krista's gift. And... Um, and then he ate one of my crocheted baskets off the Christmas tree. Uh, and I intentionally did not put candy in them yet because, uh, first off, RJ hasn't been through here but like once, twice. He'll be through here again tonight. So, yeah, um, we have the candy for him. We just don't have it on the Christmas tree because Worm has taken to eating things. Uh, next year, surely he won't. He's just, he's seven months old and he's teething. So, life with a puppy can get interesting. He's over asleep right now. Um, yeah, Hitch is over there asleep. So, hopefully, we'll get through this without a whole lot of disturbance. It probably will be short again. Um, my sinuses are draining, so I will be drinking coffee. Sorry. All right. So, let's start. Let me see here. We'll start with the one that I have finished. Okay. And that is this one. Um, in one of the podcasts, I talked about next year's goals. And first, I have to finish some things that I have here. I have way too many projects going to just sit and spin. So, this is the one. Um, Touch of Venus? Is that it? It's from this book right here. Okay. And that's by Ann Regis. And I want to see this is, yeah, there it is. So this is a touch of Venus. Now I didn't do all the colors like hers and I used a little bit thicker wool and it's hand spun. And so it, when you change a pattern, whether it be the yarn or the hook size or whatever, this pattern will always look different unless you mock exactly what they did. Which, if you know me, I change it up a little bit. I don't have to necessarily have the perfect yarn for it or the same yarn for it or, you know, anything like that. Uh, I do have, this is the same book that, hang on, I'm looking, the virus, uh, Geo comes out of, there it is. So, this is the Geo, and this is um, one that is going to carry over into the next year. So, I will show you the Geo, um, see, show you where I'm at. So, this one is totally done. It's blocked. The problem I had with blocking it was that it was too big. So, I think this summer I'm going to block it outside, like just let it hang. Um, we've got chain link fence. I literally think I'm going to wet it and let it hang. Instead of just spraying it and trying to block it, 
I'm going to use the weight of the water to allow it to um, kind of stretch out a little bit more. So this is as far as I've gotten on the geo. Oh, oh, about to lose some stitches. Okay, so this is as far as I've gotten on the geo. And this one is one that I am okay carrying over into the next year. Um, this is one, it's not mindless for me. I really have to concentrate on doing this. So I'm okay with this carrying over into the next year. Matter of fact, I think I told y'all it was in timeout because I want to get everything else done. Um, then let me get a little organized here. Okay, so that one we've talked about. This one, I'm going to put it in the Christmas tote um, because I now have an empty tote from where I made. All, well, I take that back. There is one other gift in there that I made that was just kind of a backup and it was that blue sh little shrug with the hair tie thing so it this will join it um, in there so that will go in there and then let's see here all right so you know I'm trying to clean out the basket my goal I can't remember the problem is I can't remember whether I told you my goal last week when my video didn't upload or it only half uploaded and I didn't realize it um and so I don't know whether I told you that last week or whether you're going to hear it in the, the one that I just uploaded but my goal next year is to be more spinning and dying and get some things done that I need to um so I'm trying to get everything off the hook um, except for a few things this is one that I had bought this ball of yarn and I'm just making it into uh, the virus shawl and I was gonna do the virus shawl meets granny square but it takes more yarn and I know I can do this one at a decent size in this with this one cake so there's how it's working up and it's looking really good I like it I still have probably you know half skein to go <coughs> probably a little more than half skein to go but this one is a mindless so I should have it done in no problem um, the other one that I've been trying to work on and I've come to the conclusion I may have to carry this one over um, what it is is, and I wanted to show you, there's a window here, and in the summer, the sun stays up later, so this room isn't so dark, and I can work on stuff like this, but in the winter, um, as I get older, the thinner the yarn, sometimes it creates havoc with my eyes, and I get tired, and I can crochet some by feel, but I'm not proficient at it, because I always look, so this one is not done yet it is still matter of fact I didn't even pick it up from the last podcast that only half went up till now there's no progress I haven't even picked it up um, but it's getting there okay so um, it is what it is um, it's not a mindless you have to do the pattern and of course you chart it so it's not mindless for me let's put it that way some people could do it mindlessly but I have to keep track of what row I'm on and all that stuff and I don't do it with stitch markers I've just never been proficient at using stitch markers right so my version of using a stitch marker is marking where my round is so I connect it right just saying so this one I didn't want to have to carry over but I may have to carry it over in timeout with the geo so those two I'm actually okay with it okay because the the size of the yarn is playing into that um, neither one of them are mindless for me they're beautiful the one is easy it's just I can't see everything and without the sunlight from this I can't really crochet in the time that I have my crochet time is in the evening not in the daytime um, so I had to work during the daytime to get some of that sweater done because I had to count and do all that. It took 
really working it in to get it done. So I do still have this kit. Now, this kit came with um, a hat and slipper patterns. Well, I didn't like their slipper pattern, so I made my slippers. So technically, I have made slippers. I've attempted to make a hat out of this. I didn't like the pattern. I thought I'd use some of that. This kit is just going to sit around, and this is what I will fill my mindless with. I'm not going to worry about getting it done. I'm not following their pattern, obviously. It's just... And we all have that yarn that sits around that we are going to do something different with. So that one will carry over, but not really because I, I don't, I may make all slippers out of that just to have as Christmas gifts next year. <laughs> so um, just to use up that yarn. Now the other one that, and I knew this one was going to be a carryover, but I forgot to mention it when I did the other is my round the world my little so I have a little tote here that I'm just dropping them all in Woo! and I have my hook in here and so this one I just have the different yarns and I have a ton of this yarn so if I run out of things to do this is the one I work on this is my go-to super easy um, this one, honestly, will be stored away. It's the only thing that I have that I didn't complete and that will be stored away out of a year of doing kits. Um, it's actually been a little bit longer, I think, than a year. But anyway, this is the only yarn that I have stored away for any of that. I do have some leftovers after I did the kits. So, yeah. And then I got my final kit. Um from Mary Maxim I called and I'm canceling and it came so this is the kit <laughs> right here all right so it came with this pattern right here and it has a chart oops so and I really, really like the wool. The wool is, or I say wool, it's 75% acrylic and 25% wool. Yep. And it's called uh, Lincoln Fog. And this color is called Limestone is the colorway. And so, yeah. And that's not like dog hair. That's Halo. It's got a really pretty, well, okay, that's a dog hair. But this is a really pretty halo. And this color is natural. This yarn reminds me a lot of our mohair. It really does. So I'm super excited to do this one. Now, I'm going to be honest. This is not going to happen. I just got this to Thursday. This is Tuesday. So I just got this Thursday. It's not going to happen um, before the new year comes in. But it will be added to the ones that I'm holding over. So those will be done. Um, it's just they're going to be, this is all I'm going to crochet on until I get the spinning that I want done. done. And then I hope to also do some dyeing so maybe i'll make some spinning videos show some different techniques um i'm still gonna podcast each week but we'll see where it goes from there um dog trying to get to the christmas tree water bottle it's an amazing thing um worms over asleep hitch is the one that's he's taken to chewing on the green part of a fake christmas tree Worm, on the other hand, has opened gifts, ate tissue paper, ate wrapping paper, ate a wooden, a, not wooden, a cardboard box, and he ate one of the crocheted Christmas ornaments off of my tree that are little baskets when you want to put candy in them. Well, RJ's only been through here one other time, uh, and I just handed him candy. I told him I said it's not on the tree this year because of the dog. And I do have some cups, and I think that's where I'm going to fill 
the candy. Um, RJ will be through tonight, so he knows there's a candy bowl over there, there's one on the fridge, and there's one thing. So, one of the things that I held on to when I moved out was the fact that I wanted my kids to be secure enough to come into whatever house I live in and snack. That's always been their thing. I have always baked stuff and had food around and just um, lots of snacks. RJ comes through and he'll be eating dinner with us tonight. Last week, or week before, yeah, last week, he came down to eat Sonic with us, um, I think Monday night of last week. Tonight he's coming. Um, he's going to work on a car in the shop a truck because obviously the farm doesn't have a shop he's got to change out an alternator and this shop is big enough to get his truck in so he's going to come and use the shop and roommate's dad has a bunch of tools and stuff out there so gets him out of the weather gets me time with my son <laughs> i'm not going to not say that but anyway the snack and the candy and i think i'm gonna put another bowl here with what would be on the christmas tree if you followed us for very long, you know that our Christmas tree is not this untouchable, pretty thing. It has always had crocheted Christmas ornaments on it, straw Christmas ornaments. It's got pull toys on it. Um, and RJ always would get them, his favorite to, care, to take off the Christmas tree and carry around. Let me see if I can find one. His favorite was a cow. Hold on just a second. Let me... Okay, let me see if I can find the cow real quick. And of course, when you're looking for one, you can't really find, there it is. Okay. Okay, so, um, our Christmas tree has baskets with candy on them and straw thing and then of course the candy canes and then we also had toys this was rj's favorite okay and as you can tell it's kind of dying might have to work on it <laughs> he played with these things non-stop when he was a kid it was what the christmas tree was i think that foot is getting that hand and it's just it literally is strings down in there we go yeah foot might be off so let me see if i can get it done here's another one and these are from germany um now the cow is from germany it was imported but i got it um years ago when he was young so um he picked it out and so this one is from e Fals, 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 yeah. Anyway, so our Christmas tree, and with these bigger ones, you kind of can see how they work. There's just a little block in there and see the string. And they just pull. They're easy to fix. They use red string. Um, you can tell the older ones have the hook and eye in them. And, you know, so these are the things that were on our tree. And we always had them. Um, I've got a couple of little wooden nutcrackers. My daughter loves nutcrackers. So she used to take them. And they actually, the little things function. And, you, um, and then, of course, I've got an angel. I've got a soldier. I've got the male that matches this. He looks like Pinocchio, I, I think. I, I don't remember. He's like a little. Um, and so, yeah. We've always had an interactive tree, um, not a don't touch. The kids would come, run through, and they would eat. I feel like you guys are far away now that I moved that. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, they'd always come through and grab a toy and play with it while they were watching TV. They would grab candy out of the baskets. I see. And they're just crocheted baskets. Over the years, so they're they're the sugar um, set kind and they've gotten they've been loved okay 
Well, the dog ate one of these, which I can make another one. Um, I've got a couple of stars that are pockets that have that would have candy in them. Um, we do have our Christmas postcard. You know, please, Angel of Christmas, let there be peace on earth. Um, we have our German bird's nest with the baby Jesus in it. And then, of course, we've got the, the dove of peace. Those things, the kids move around. They're not, they're just there. Um, we don't, we just don't do this unbreakable, don't touch thing. And unfortunately, the dogs have caught on to this, so they've been touching. But when I moved, I wanted to keep that, come through the house, grab something off the Christmas tree, um, candy dishes. They know where the snack cabinet is if they're hungry they know to come in and raid the fridge rj's come in and just open it so what you got to eat and <laughs> there's always sandwich stuff there so always a few leftovers um that kind of stuff so he makes himself at home and for us the fact that he'll come in and just get his own food me as a mom that's important it, i want him to feel at home and I want him to feel like he can just come here and, and do even roommate, you know, says that that's the one thing that the kids need. They need that to know that mom is still going to be mom and that fridge is always open. <laughs> so that's silly to say, but it's just the way the house has always been. Um, I have the little cake dish. I've been making cookies. Um... I've been doing a lot of Christmas stuff. We're going to change the Christmas tradition a little bit. So for Thanksgiving, I did a big meal. And last year, I did a big Christmas meal. Well, this year, everybody's having trouble fitting stuff in. Life gets busier. I get that. So what we're going to do this year is I get the kids on Christmas Eve. Um, now, keep in mind, my kids are grown. Okay, RJ's the baby of the family. He's 24. But they know what Christmas means to me and how I love to have them around and that there's traditions that go back a long time and I love those traditions. So um, anyway, Thanksgiving we did a big meal. Uh, Christmas Eve we will be dog fussing christmas eve we will be cookie decorating we're going to have finger foods we're going to have punch we're going to have eggnog um we're going to do our own little thing we're going to decorate some christmas cookies just for fun um just like when they were a kid of course we're going to eat the christmas cookies too but hey um so we're going to open gifts and all of that on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, I will have Krista. And, oh, and we're doing pies. We're going to do, like, snacks. Lots of snacks. Um, lots of junk food. Um, all the little recipes that I made all season long, like starting the 1st of December, I have most of those done. I have everything from RJ's Reese's Peanut Butter Cup type bars to his drop cookies to Tori's sugar cookies is what we're going to decorate. That was always her favorite. Um, then I've got, uh, what else did I do? I, we've actually got some cupcakes cause it's Chris's birthday tomorrow. Um, we've got, I've got peanut butter, chocolate chip, um, lots of cookies, dip pretzels, uh, meringue cookies, we're going to do pie. I'm actually making the list and getting everything. I'm just going to do a, a cherry or an apple pie. And then I'm going to do, oh no, I'm going to do a cheesecake and a pumpkin pie. So those are the two that get eaten the most. So we'll do cheesecake and pumpkin pie. And then, um, yeah, well, I may do an extra pie just so that we have it for Christmas day. I might do two pumpkins. I don't know, but we're going to snack. We're going to have drinks. We're going to decorate Christmas cookies and be silly um, and open presents. 
just like when they were kids. So that's going to be my Christmas Eve with the kids. And then Christmas Day, roommate and I have decided we're just going to have a quiet one. Um, roommates, mom and stepdad, I don't know if we're going to drop off their gifts or if they're coming Christmas Eve or what. Um, for finger foods for Christmas Eve, we are going to have some sandwiches. I'm just going to, I was going to make fancy trays, but I'm not going to. I am going to hitch. It's enough. Um, I was going to make really like fancy trays and that and roll them up. I don't see the point because then I got to put it all away if we don't use it. So I'm literally going to have Tupperware tubs with the meat and the cheese and we'll do some sausage, you know, some, uh, cheese and cracker type sausage, uh, summer sausage. So we're going to have that kind of stuff. So, but we are having protein and meat, but we're going to do it in the form of sandwiches. So, um, it is what it is. It's Christmas is changing a little bit. And I think that comes with the fact that the kids are getting older. They have their loved ones that they have chosen um, you know, to be partners with or, or marry or, you know, um, it is what it is. And I understand that. Can't say as I like it because I want my family to come first, but they are juggling. Um, RJ's juggling with Macy, Tori's juggling with Brad, it is what it is. And so I'll get used to it. I do want that feeling where they can come in and snack. And so that's what we're going to do Christmas Eve is we're going to give them that snacky feeling back, come in and, you know, sandwiches and cookies and candies. And we're probably all going to have belly aches. Um, I'm going to get some eggnog. Uh, I was going to make it, but I'm not going to because I don't know how stout people like it. So yeah, um, we're going to have, of course, we've got the wine. We've got Christmas wine. Um, yeah, we're just going to have our designated drivers, and we're going to drink and laugh and have an old-fashioned Christmas Eve with junk food and sandwiches. Finger foods. I thought about making the sandwiches and cutting them in triangles like I did when they were kids, but I don't know that I want to do that because then... You know, we have to store all those sandwiches if they don't. And RJ, he's like, why do you make these so little? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, I, one time I was going to make a meat tray and a cheese tray. And I, I don't know. It will come together how it's going to come together. And if I just slap all the stuff out there, they will eat. So, all right. That is our Christmas plan. I know this is not the podcast that y'all are used to. We'll see where I sit. Um, these podcasts for me, the, these last few getting to the end of the year is to figure out if I'm finishing this stuff up. This is goals for me and I want it finished up so that I can start and incorporate more spinning and dyeing in with my crochet. And I will have progress on these crochet things that I'm still working on to show you each podcast. But I'm hoping, by the grace of God, I don't get bit by some yarn bug. I'm hoping to make my own yarn and incorporate that and talk about, you know, how many yards and what kind of wool and um, whether I Navajo plied it or regular plied it, whether I did it on the walking wheel or the kiwi or the traditional or I want to get into that a little bit too because I used to do all of that. And I'm having trouble balancing it. So, um, yeah, I'll get there. I just, this year's goal is to try and get back to doing all the things instead of just crochet. So, um, hopefully I'll have, um, video on like Navajo ply, um, talking about how you gauge your yarn, different things like that. I still won't get rid of the podcast. Of course, I'll do that every week if I can get it uploaded properly. So yeah, that's where we stand. I want you guys to all have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, Kwanzaa, whatever it is. 
that celebrates what brings joy to your life. I want you to be very happy doing that this year. Um, I pray every day that you guys are happy, healthy, and just living life. So, you guys are always in my thoughts and prayers. Merry Christmas. Um, I'm going to upload this one. Yeah, I'm going to monitor it today. It's my last day off before Christmas, so yeah, I'm going to monitor it. But I will get it up because I want you to know how much I love you guys and how much you are helping me achieve goals just by doing this little bit, helping me achieve goals and keeping me on track, even though you don't know you are. <laughs> so hopefully next year it'll be more well-balanced with spinning and crochet. I will see you guys in the last year, in the last week of the year. God bless every one of you and Merry Christmas.